Hello everybody, this is Brett Lonsdale from Lightning Tools and thank you very much for joining another webinar in our webinar series. Uh, this particular webinar is going to be on SharePoint permissions and is mostly focused on those users that are managing permissions that happen to be maybe site owners or site collection administrators. Um, basically, uh, if, if you are a business user and uh, you own content with inside SharePoint and how to manage that uh, effectively. Uh, of course, if you're a, a SharePoint administrator, uh, whether that's a, a SharePoint tenant administrator or also a, a SharePoint farm administrator uh, hopefully you'll also find this really useful as well um, on uh, maybe learning some permission uh, tips and tricks but also um, you know on the sort of things that your users may have to go through when they're managing permissions um, as a business user or as a, a site collection administrator or, or site owner so um, just a, a quick introduction to Lightning Tools for uh, any of you who don't know who we are. Um, we are a company based in the UK. We have a US uh, office as well. Um, and we basically provide tools um, in the form of web parts or, or standalone tools that uh, overcome some of the different challenges inside of SharePoint and uh, SharePoint, well, SharePoint on-premises and also SharePoint online. Um, they can be um, various different types of challenges. We, uh, we cover it quite a lot uh, through our suite of products um, that uh, includes the content aggregation tools that we have, uh, which is our, our lightning conductor, so it's a, a roll-up tool. Uh, we also have um, a discussion forum tool called Social Squared. Uh, we can enable you to customize your, your SharePoint list forms uh, and library forms, so adding logic to those using our, our tool called the uh, Lightning Forms. Um, and we've also got some data visualization and charting tools as well, uh, so that's really covered under our BCS Metaman um, SharePoint chart and also uh, data viewer products. And of course, um, we're going to touch on today, uh, towards the end of uh, this webinar, our permissions management tool, which is uh, known as DeliverPoint. Um, the webinar itself is not on DeliverPoint. The uh, the webinar is actually on SharePoint permissions out of the box. Um, but what uh, I'll hopefully do is get some time uh, towards the end to also um, give you a, a preview of uh, the, uh, the SharePoint permissions management tool as well. So, Lightning Tools, as I mentioned, we uh, we've founded um, just over uh, 12 years ago um, in in 2007, and um, we uh, we created our first product back then, which is uh, BCS Metaman or BDC Metaman, as it was uh, then known. Um, we've grown into uh, a company that offers products uh, to our customers around the world, um, and we are a Microsoft Gold partner. And uh, also something we're very very proud of is uh, we hold a certification for our coding best practices. So this is something that we consider extremely important. Hopefully you consider extremely important as well. Um, there is a product called um, or by a company called Renko called SPCAF and what you can do with that tool is analyze the code that you're putting into your environment so if you're looking to buy any sort of third-party tool that's going to go into your SharePoint farm or into your SharePoint online environment you can test it before you do hand uh, or before you do so uh, using SPCAF and it will analyze uh, any memory leaks or, or any badly written code for you um, so that you can uh, deploy that product with confidence and this is something that we use to analyze our own code um, before uh, before releasing our software so uh, so it's something that you can um, uh, be assured on uh, and also uh, like I say test yourself as well if you want to so um, without further ado let's take a, a look at uh, this webinar so controlling your SharePoint permissions and um, the agenda what we're basically looking at doing first of all uh, just make sure everybody's on the share on the same page basically uh, and that is to uh, to just cover the basics of SharePoint permissions first of all uh, so what we're going to do is just talk about how the permissions work um, so we have the uh, the different user accounts the SharePoint groups etc permission levels and individual permissions how all of that comes together um, and that will be uh, in, in both SharePoint on-prem and also SharePoint online um, we're also going to talk about um, how permissions are managed so uh, with that within your organization is that something that is managed um, centrally by the IT department or is it something that is managed um, in a decentralized permissions management environment ie um, we're pushing that out to the business users uh, those business users are, are trained on SharePoint site management they're creating these sites they're creating lists of libraries they're defining columns for metadata uh, and things like that and basically they're providing this environment where their team can can work and, and be uh, collaborating on, on content and part of that responsibility comes permissions and um, that's to make sure that the right people can manage uh, the, uh, the the content that they're putting inside the sites without 
perhaps being able to do uh, harm by by having uh, more permissions than what they need. So uh, we'll have a look at um, what the differences are between that centralized and decentralized permissions management sort of um, framework. Uh, and then we're going to also take a look at uh, what's different in modern sites. You may be um, using SharePoint 2019 already, um, or if you've uh, if you've been using Office 365, you'll, you'll notice that's changing constantly uh, with, with the look and feel of, of SharePoint sites and, and also lists and libraries. Um, so uh, permissions is one of those things that's been affected by a lot of those changes recently. Uh, so we've gone away from, or, or we're transitioning away from using uh, the tr traditional site collections. Um, that has a big bearing on, on how we go about uh, managing our permissions with inside of SharePoint, um, as well as obviously the UI changing and the introduction of Office 365 groups uh, that also has an effect on, on how we work with our permissions. So we'll be taking a look at that. Um, also, as a content owner, um, so that could be a site collection admin, it could be a site owner, somebody full control. Um, we'll have a look at how you can better control and better understand the uh, permissions that are assigned to your users um, and, and basically get the, the best out of those permissions uh, within inside the sites that you manage. And uh, right at the very end, um, like I said, we'll have a quick overview of our permissions management tool as well uh, called DeliverPoint. And what I might do is actually use DeliverPoint a couple of times during the webinar just to prove some things to you, um, which would be uh, based on um, the sort of lack of reporting with inside of SharePoint. I want to show you things that actually SharePoint won't tell you. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll use uh, DeliverPoint as a mechanism to, uh, to present that. All right. So, uh, so that's really the, uh, the overview. Um, should last about an hour. We uh, we have um, built in some time for Q and A as well. Uh, so at the end of the the webinar, what I'm going to do is open up the uh, the floor for any questions that you might have. Um, and if you do want to ask any questions at all, um, then uh, all you need to do is simply raise your hand using the GoToWebinar software. Uh, so you can uh, raise your hand. I'll unmute you. You can ask your question. And um, if you are not prepared to, to, to answer a question, then you can also email me after the event as well. Um, so my email address is brett at lightningtools.com. Uh, so feel free to, uh, to ask any questions there. All right, so um, first of all, as mentioned, we'll have a look at the basics of uh, SharePoint permissions. And what we basically have with inside SharePoint, and this is the same for SharePoint on-premises or SharePoint online, uh, doesn't really matter whether you're using SharePoint uh, 2013 um, or whether you're using SharePoint 2019 or, or like I said the, the most uh, up-to-date version of SharePoint online um, this diagram kind of describes well how the SharePoint permissions work uh, so the fundamentals of SharePoint permissions hasn't ever really changed there's just been some uh, variations uh, within the UI um, and also recently the introduction of things like Office 365 groups that change it somewhat but not too much. Uh, so uh, we'll, we'll talk about um, the, the permissions to start off with using the uh, the diagram. So what we um, have first of all on the on the very left hand side is the actual permissions themselves, and, and these permissions are broken down into three different areas: uh, things that you can do with the site, things that you can do with the list, and uh, things that you can do um, personally, basically. Uh, so these are site permissions, list permissions, and, uh, and personal permissions. Um, and there's around about 30 or 40 different permissions uh, that make up each permission level. And these permission levels, you're, you'll find the most common ones. They may vary again, depending on uh, whether your organization has created some custom permission levels for you, uh, whether you have publishing enabled or not with inside your SharePoint sites. Uh, things like that can uh, can affect uh, what permission levels you might see uh, but we're going to talk about the sort of default ones uh, which you're likely going to come across um, such as read contribute edit design and full control they're the, the main ones that we need to be uh, concerned with um, so each of these permission levels are basically made up of individual permissions and that's what makes it easy for us to go through and assign those permissions um, either to an individual or also to a group of people and preferably a group of people. Um, it makes it quite challenging if we start assigning permission levels to individual users. Um, this is something that uh, sometimes cannot be avoided uh, and we'll talk about that as we go through the, uh, the webinar. 
Um, so we have those permission levels, um, and I'll demonstrate this to you as well uh, very, very shortly. Um, we've also got users or groups, and what we're talking about here uh, primarily is individual users, individual SharePoint users, and um, SharePoint groups. So the SharePoint groups um, will also vary inside your environment as well. When you first create a site, and you'll see this shortly, um, when you first create a site, if that site has unique permissions, then basically you're going to see three groups that are created for you. One is um, the, 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 each named after the, uh, the site, so it'll be site name visitors, uh, site name members, and site name owners. And uh, each of those three groups, uh, like I say, get created with the site and they are assigned a permission level. So the visitors is assigned the read permissions and the, uh, the members is assigned edit if you're using SharePoint 2013 or later. And we've got uh, the owners, which is assigned full control. So this becomes a sort of easy way of granting those permission levels uh, with inside your site. So if we want to give somebody the ability to work within the site, either they can create documents, they can work with those documents, they can utilize all of the lists and, and so on. We add them as a member and uh, as a being a member, they go into the SharePoint members group and they get the edit permission uh, to that particular team site. And, and that's it. It becomes something that is quite complex under the covers to be a very easy step. We don't have to take an individual and go through and assign them each of these individual permissions from a list of about 30 or 40 of them. Uh, we just put them into the most relevant group and that's going to uh, give them the appropriate permissions. So uh, that's the sort of basics of it. Um, and we can assign those permissions um, to these users or groups at different levels. We can assign them at the site level, uh, to the list level, library level, or also with inside those lists or libraries, we have folders, items, documents, and so on that we can assign those permissions to. And uh, by default, each of these um, objects, each of these securable objects, um, inherit permissions from their parent. Uh, so we start off with a site collection um, known as the root site collection. Um, we can assign all the permissions uh, to that root site. And as we expand that site collection by creating subsites, um, those subsites are going to inherit the permissions from the parent. And everything by default will just inherit permissions. We decide to break the permission inheritance when we want more granular uh, control of who can access our content. So typically, when we refer to a classic site collection, when we create a new site collection, our first site is really going to be sort of like the home page for a department, if we, if we think of it that way, or the home site for a department. And um, therefore, most people within inside that department are going to have at least read permissions uh, to that site. But as we sort of get more granular with inside the department, so um, if we take a sales department as an example, uh, we might have a sales site collection. So all of the salespeople can access the sales team site. Um, but then we have a subsite maybe called partners. And then we only want the partner managers to be able to contribute with inside the partner team site. Um, we might have a regionalized subsites as well, one for North America, uh, another one for Europe or something like this. And of course, we want the relevant salespeople that work within those regions to have different permissions uh, to each of their sites. So at that point, we might be breaking the permission inheritance and assigning different people different permissions or different groups different permissions uh, within inside those sites. And the same thing applies with inside the lists or libraries as well. Uh, so we can break the permission inheritance there and, uh, and make the uh, securable objects sort of more granular as to uh, who needs permissions to them. OK, so that's the, uh, like I say, the, the, the basics of it. Um, with uh, SharePoint uh, on-premises or also SharePoint online, you may also have Active Directory security groups. And this starts to add a little bit of a complication to the sort of simplicity of this diagram. Um, so your company, your organization, um, will have an Active Directory, uh, which is basically um, all of the users, all of the computers within inside your, your network or within inside your organization as stored as a, as a catalog, if you like, or, or a directory. And that can also, uh, sorry, 
that can also uh, contain two different types of groups. One is a distribution group, which is used primarily for email distribution, and the other one is a security group. And that security group can be used uh, as a group of users to assign permissions to lots of different things. And it's not just SharePoint. It can be you know, the printers inside your office, or it could be uh, a particular computer or a file share or something like that. You happen to also be able to use them with inside of SharePoint. Um, and the ways that we can use them in SharePoint is either by taking that security group and giving it a permission directly uh, against a, a site or a list or a library, um, or we can also nest that Active Directory security group inside of a SharePoint group as well. So in other words, if within inside our organization we had already a departmental Active Directory security group called sales, uh, we could take that sales Active Directory security group and put it into my sales members SharePoint group. Um, and that's then all taken care of uh, as far as granting permissions to those users is concerned. Anybody that's already a member of the Active Directory security group, they all get access to my site. They can all use it uh, without me having to add each individual into a SharePoint group. So there's uh, that that can also uh, have a bearing on this diagram and uh, if we're using SharePoint online uh, then you've also got Office 365 security uh, sorry Office 365 groups as well uh, so when we create a new modern site um, we automatically get an Office 365 group and behind the scenes that is actually the same as an Active Directory security group um, it's already put those users into the Azure Active Directory security group for me. Um, so the same thing sort of applies. I can take that um, Office 365 group and nest it inside of a SharePoint group and control my permissions that way. And these are things that we're uh, going to take a look at uh, in just a moment. OK, so uh, let's do that. Uh, let's jump into uh, into SharePoint. And um, I'm going to start off here with a brand new SharePoint team site. Um, so uh, we're going to, on the uh, Office 365 logon page here, uh, I'm going to go into SharePoint. And um, what you see here is uh, will, will, will vary a little bit, um, whether you're using Office 365 or, or whether you're using um, SharePoint on-premises. Uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and create a brand new site. Um, the theory behind all of this is the same. It doesn't matter uh, what you're using here. Uh, so I'm going to create a new team site. And in Office 365, we first of all get to give that site a name, just as we would in, in SharePoint on-prem. Uh, so we're going to call this um, SharePoint Permissions Webinar. OK, and uh, by typing that out uh, in SharePoint Online, um, there's a validation that that site name is available. The reason why that check is uh, being done there is because this is actually a, a Active Directory security group. As I mentioned, it's also going to create an email account for me as well called SharePoint Permissions Webinar. So um, it's just checking that that is unique uh, for, for when it's going to, uh, to create that. We also have some privacy settings. So the privacy settings are basically anybody in the organization can access this site or only members that I invite can access this site which is kind of the default behavior that we're all used to uh, using SharePoint. So I'm going to go with that option. So on this page this is quite an interesting page. This is where we can add group members. And it gives me the ability to add additional owners or additional members. Now, the interesting thing here is, one thing you'll have to trust me on here, uh, but I'll show you shortly, is I actually have an Active Directory security group called Sales already created. But notice how I can't actually add that. If I try to uh, enter the word sales into my add members, it doesn't accept it. I uh, cannot uh, add the sales Active Directory Security Group in there. This literally does have to be individuals. So um, what we have here is a, a number of different demo users. So I can choose, for example, demo user five, uh, demo user six, and so on, and add the people that I want to be members into this site. But nowhere here does it talk about what permission uh, or anything those users are going to get. Um, at the moment, uh, it's just going to make them members, and that's all we need to, uh, to, to care about. Uh, we'll take a look at what it's doing behind the scenes in, uh, in just a second. So, um, so I'm happy with that. Uh, there's not going to be an additional owner besides me. Um, we've got a couple of members, so uh, we'll accept it and choose Finish. Okay, and let's go and have a look at um, 
what happened there. So we get our new site created with the uh, the random color that uh, SharePoint wants to add for me. So I've got uh, the, the the dark green theme uh, by the looks of things applied to this. That's probably my least favorite, but okay. Uh, so in here we'll uh, we'll take a look at the uh, the permissions. Now what you'll notice in the top right hand corner um, is we have three members and this is quite a welcome change in a SharePoint modern site. One thing you may have seen has disappeared is the big share button in the top right hand corner and that share button kind of got a bad name for itself. Um, but uh, now we, we kind of have the same functionality, it's, it's just uh, different. What we can do is click onto that uh, members and you'll, you'll notice that you've got the ability to add members at this stage. Uh, so we can add members and by clicking on to add a member uh, we can again type in a user so I can uh, take any one of these as uh, so well add demo user 4 to the mix and when we hit save you can see here that we're sort of building up a list of people that are members of this site so we've got um, my account which is the owner and then I've also got demo user 4 5 and 6 uh, which are all members but we don't really know uh, what that means at the moment and uh, like I said we'll, we'll dive in and, and have a look at that so um, the other thing that I'll, uh, I'll point out here, if we click on to add, um, sorry, no, I won't put that out just yet. <laughs> sorry, if we uh, if we go to um, the cog in the top right hand corner, the the settings cog, what you'll notice is we, we've also got this site permissions link. So uh, by clicking on that site permissions, this is where we can start to see how the permissions are working. So this is where we've got those site owners, site members, and site visitors. So these are the the, the three groups. Um, again, we can click onto the invite people. This is what I wanted to show you. I was just in the wrong place. Um, so when I click onto invite people, I have two options here. I can add members to group or I can share site only. Now there is a big difference. Um, like I said, in SharePoint Online now, we have Office 365 groups, and that is basically what was created for me when I created this site. So I ended up with two Office 365 groups essentially. One is an owners group and one is a members group uh, for this uh, for, for this site. So um, I could add members to a group. That's going to basically put them into um, the the Office 365 group for me. Um, or if we just uh, close that and go back to site permissions and invite people again, I can share the site only. And by doing that, I'm literally just giving them permissions to the site. I am not giving them permissions, or I'm not making them a member of this Office 365 group that can be used not just in inside SharePoint, but also with inside Teams and OneDrive and Outlook and, uh, and everything else. So I can just give people permissions by sharing the site. So uh, notice here, if I type in the word sales, that that is now recognizing and resolving the sales Active Directory group that I mentioned. So uh, we can add that just to the site, but the users with inside that Active Directory security group will not become members of the Office 365 group. In other words, they won't have access to anything apart from this SharePoint site that I'm creating for them. Okay, so we can uh, we can do that. I don't need to send an email message to them. I can clear that and just click on to add, and uh, that sales domain group or Active Directory security group is is now added as a site member, and uh, and the users within it will have access to the site and nothing else. Okay, so that's kind of like a, a simple way of granting permissions, giving people permissions to this uh, site. Uh, you'll notice here that we have this advanced permissions settings link. So I'm just going to click onto that. And uh, those of you that are not um, using modern yet will certainly feel all warm and tingly. This is um, the, uh, the the classic site uh, that we're uh, sort of used to or the classic look and feel. Uh, we've got ribbon buttons and all sorts of things in here. Uh, but what you'll see here is uh, the three different uh, groups that you're used to. So this is where we've got the members, the owners and the visitors. And we can see the permission level that is assigned to each of them, uh, which is the edit, full control and read. Now, if we uh, go into the site members, we can uh, see here that we've got the Office 365 group is actually a member. Remember I uh, mentioned that this is treated exactly the same as an Active Directory security group. Uh, that's exactly what it is. Um, so we've got this uh, this entry here for the SharePoint permissions webinar members, and we've also got the sales Active Directory security group that I just added. So both of those 
uh, Active Directory security groups are nested within inside the members SharePoint group. Now, one of the downsides um, to assigning permissions in this way is uh, by clicking onto either of these things, we don't actually get to see who's within them. And this is a challenge for business users that are effectively managing content. Um, we don't know who lives inside these groups and really we've got to sort of put that trust in um, to the uh, tenant administrators or to the SharePoint farm administrators um, if you're uh, if you're using uh, SharePoint on-prem we've got to put the trust in that these um, Active Directory security groups are managed effectively i.e. when somebody leaves the organization they are taken out of these groups or if somebody changes roles uh, they're moved between the Active Directory security groups and that's the uh, the downside on the plus side it means that we've got um, simplicity and we've got a single point of removal should somebody leave the organization. So I can simply um, go into the Active Directory, users and computers, and take somebody out of the sales domain group if they cease to be a salesperson. Uh, and that will take them out of that group, but would also effectively remove their permissions from anything that uh, was granted to that sales domain group. So it's really simple to, uh, to remove those permissions. Okay, so um, that's kind of the, uh, the, the the basics to that. Uh, we can, of course, um, assign permissions to these groups directly. We don't have to invite people through the new sort of modern interface on, on the site. So just like we, uh, we're used to, I can add users to this group just like so. Um, as we did before, we can enter the, uh, the, the name of the account. We can uh, select it and, uh, and click share. Okay, and that's one thing we're going to be sort of focusing on a little bit as well. Notice here that uh, I just added demo user 11. So that demo user is directly a member of the uh, members group. And uh, and that's giving them edit permissions to this uh, particular site. So um, that's assigning permissions. Uh, so we can do that through security groups. We can add members to, to, to these or add individuals to our SharePoint groups. Um, and uh, we can also use other permission levels as well. So there's other permission levels that we can explore. And one way of doing that, if we just um, actually back up to the uh, homepage again for this particular site. Okay, and we're going to bring up the... Uh, site permissions once more. Let's show you how we could navigate to that. And by going to the uh, the advanced permissions, you'll notice on the uh, the ribbon uh, that we have the permission levels. So under permission levels, these are the uh, five permission levels that we typically get. And um, we've got the, the full control design, edit, contribute, and read. And if we go into um, some of these, so the ones I want to focus on, first of all, full control and edit. They're the main two that we're going to be giving users permissions to when we invite them to the site or we share um, the, the site with them. So if we have a look at edit as an example, we can click on to edit and you'll notice some of the different um, individual permissions that we mentioned that uh, are assigned to this permission level and therefore the, the SharePoint group that the members group and any individuals therefore that are a member of those those groups uh, so they get all of the personal permissions so managing personal views being able to add or remove web parts being able to update the properties with inside those web parts um, plus a whole bunch of site permissions so they can open up the site and and do a number of different things within it um, and they've also got some list permissions and it's the list of permissions that i want to focus on a little bit so as a member of a site um, with edit permissions you can of course add items you can edit items you can delete items and of course you can view items and so on uh, you can also delete versions of items uh, if you've got versioning switched on um, and so on and all of these kind of make sense the one that is questionable is this top one here, manage lists. Notice that it says you can create and delete lists. You can add or remove columns in a list and you can add or remove public views of a list. So that tick there is making this permission level quite an advanced permission level. And it is the default permission level that you would get when somebody is added as a member to a site. And um, what I want to do now is actually switch to demo user 11 
and open up that site and just to make my life easier here I'm just going to copy paste the URL so um, I'm signed in in this other browser window as demo user 11 who I've just made a member of uh, this particular site so here we are demo user 11 and um, what you'll notice is uh, the different things that I can do with the site so I can click onto the uh, onto the cog if I go to the site settings it's going to be fairly minimal uh, compared to what I can do when I've got full control uh, through the owners group but one of the things I can do if I go to site contents is I can go through and add additional lists and libraries and um, what I'm going to do here is create a new document library and we'll call that something like important stuff and click create so we get a brand new uh, document library that we can start working with okay but we've also got the existing document library as well uh, called documents now the reason why I did that um, you'll notice if I go back to site contents it's sometimes considered that a user that um, is a member and therefore gets edit permissions can basically work with the documents and that's it but they can actually remove um, entire lists and libraries and the contents within them uh, now you won't necessarily believe that when you first of all take a look at a document library um, so the default document library called documents that comes with a site when we click on to show actions we don't see a remove option or a delete option we can go into the settings of that library and we don't see the delete document library link either it's just not there so your assumption is this user cannot delete document libraries um, but let's go and have a look at the the new one that I created now this new document library inherits permissions from the site I have not changed the permission inheritance on it um, but uh, we can actually delete that document library you'll notice that if I go to the site contents and have a look at important stuff on that uh, drop down is the option to remove so we have remove we have settings and details and uh, if we just uh, go back to the lightning tools account again so this is the the one that actually did create the site this uh, lightning tools account is the owner um, so notice when we go into the uh, site settings uh, so I need to do that via site information um, so it's view all site settings we've got all of the settings here because we are the owner and if we go into the site contents you'll see I've got the original document library and I've also got the important stuff document library and just like the demo user 11 account which is has edit permissions I can remove important stuff but even as the owner I don't get that remove on the original document library uh, if we go into the settings on the original document library um, I do see permissions for this document library so I can change those uh, which demo user 11 will not be able to do uh, but uh, neither account can actually just go through and delete that document library um, so yes if you do have edit permissions you can create and you can delete entire document libraries and for that reason what I want to do is sort of introduce you to the idea of creating another SharePoint group with inside your site rather than just the three uh, default groups that we get so edit is uh, as you can see quite a, a powerful permission level might be ideal for your environment um, but you may uh, consider it not to be a, an ideal fit if you've um, if you don't want the users to not necessarily deliberately but even accidentally um, remove a document library they could quite easily um, you know, go through create a uh, a list or a library and delete the wrong document library and of course you're going to be able to restore that and and, and so on so uh, not not too much of an issue um, but it's still going to be um, something you need to, uh, to to consider as, as a risk so uh, if we don't want them to uh, to accidentally uh, remove that uh, what we could do is create them as a contributor instead so when we go back to the um, site permissions 
and back into the advanced permission settings we do have uh, under permission levels already we have the uh, the contribute um, permission level so I can work with that one and what I'm going to do uh, rather than adding a, a new permission level I'm just going to use contribute um, but what I will do is create a new SharePoint group because we currently don't have a SharePoint group that is mapped to the contribute permission level and I don't want to start adding individuals to that permission level directly I want to add those individuals via a group uh, to give them that permission level so let's get back to the uh, to the permissions so we're going to click onto the uh, settings here go into the site permissions once more into the advanced permission settings and we can create a group so uh, creating this group we can give it some form of name uh, so we'll call it SharePoint permissions contributors which uh, seems reasonable to me um, we could obviously describe it uh, give it a purpose we can change the owner and I highly recommend changing the owner so the owner is always going to be you it's going to be the person that's currently logged on when this group gets created now one downside um, not the end of the world but if I was to leave the organization um, I would create a bit of a headache it means the site collection administrator would need to come in and change the group owner um, so otherwise nobody will be able to change the members and all that sort of thing so just to sort of safeguard that what I tend to do is I remove the group owner you cannot add multiple people in here you cannot add a uh, security group an active directory security group but you can add a SharePoint group so what I tend to do is add the owners group for the site collection so what we can do here is this is called SharePoint permissions webinar owners there we go so anybody that is a site collection administrator will automatically go into this group they will then be able to manage the membership of this group uh, since uh, yeah view members of this group and edit the membership of the group have these settings so group members can view um, owners can uh, can edit so once we've done that the only thing that's uh, left to do is to map it to the contribute permission level so we can uh, we can set that at the bottom here uh, so I'll choose that and I'll hit create and now we have this new group called SharePoint permissions contributors that I am the owner of um, I'm also inside it already it may be a member uh, and I can go through and add people to that so uh, we can basically click on to add users to this group put a user in here uh, so we could put uh, demo user 11 in there click share and um, what I'll do is I'm just gonna go and take user 11 out of the members group okay and uh, what we should find when we go back to uh, Chrome in this case and we're logged in as demo user 11 that we can go back to the uh, the site contents uh, but um, we shouldn't be able to once this is finished loading so that remove option has now gone away from the document library um, so that user has lost the ability to manage that document library they can't uh, create columns inside that document library they can't create shared views um, they can basically create stuff they can create documents they can edit those documents they can delete those documents and so on uh, which of course you would also be able to go through and control by maybe customizing or, or creating a custom uh, permission level that doesn't have the, uh, the the delete documents option in it okay so um, that's kind of uh, the, the basics of uh, permissions hopefully um, that bit is useful to you uh, let's talk a little bit about the permission inheritance so permission inheritance is uh, is something that um, can be quite confusing um, so basically the permission inheritance can be broken 
uh, on a subsite as long as you are the site owner. So when we're in a traditional site collection, when we create a subsite, the default is that we can inherit the permissions from the parent, but we also have the ability at the time of creating that subsite to have unique permissions instead, in which case those three groups get created again, we'll have a new members group, we'll have a new owners group, and we'll have a new visitors group. Nobody will have permission to it until we start adding those people into it besides the person who created it. Um, but once we've, uh, we've actually created it, if we inherit permissions, then we can also break the permission inheritance as long as we are the site owner. So by breaking permission inheritance, uh, what happens is it will retain a copy of all of those users that originally had permissions to the site, but it would allow us to change them. So we could take people out of the uh, the control list for that subsite uh, and add new people into it. The groups are not separate groups, and that's something that you really need to consider. The um, groups that were defined at the top level um, will also still be listed as having permissions to your subsite as well. So if you don't want that to happen, you can basically take those groups out. And this is where a lot of challenges can occur. So let's consider on um, subsite two in this regard, we create subsite two, originally it inherited permissions. We break the permission inheritance and the three groups that were defined at the top level still reside in the subsite, in, in subsite two. And then somebody goes and shares the top level site giving somebody membership permissions, i.e. edit, they will also get edit permissions to subsite 2, even though it has unique permissions, basically because subsite 2 still has the members group from the top level site as having edit permissions to the subsite 2 as well. So you, when you break permission inheritance, it's important to consider whether you need to also remove the groups that were added at the top level site. So lists and library permissions can also be broken at the list or library by the site owner. So if you've got a document library that's going to contain um, more granular uh, permissions, then what you can do is stop the permission inheritance from the document library from the site, and uh, you can trim down the permissions uh, for that library, and uh, people will, uh, or, or less people may have uh, permissions or they have uh, lower permission levels uh, assigned to them. So that's something you can do at the document library level or any list. Um, and you can do the same thing for items and folders. Now, it's items and folders that I really want to sort of focus on uh, at this stage because this is something that gets uh, a lot of people into a little bit of a mess with um, broken permission inheritance and performance even can be affected as well as um, a big challenge when somebody is to leave the organization or, or change um, roles with inside a, an organization. Now, if you read the Microsoft documents, uh, Microsoft Docs uh, descriptions of permission inheritance, which I've got a link to on the very last slide, uh, you'll see that um, it's got this text and it says, users with control of the library can change the item and folder permissions. Users with control of the library means people with edit permissions. So people with edit permissions who share can effectively break the permission inheritance of a folder or a document. And uh, let's take a look at that in this next demo. So what I'm going to do is just go into my document library here. So I'll go into the default document library. Let me just give that page a quick refresh. If it's uh, I'll close it. <laughs> Let's just bring up a new browser one moment. That one seemed to have hung. Okay, so, uh, so back into the site, what I'm gonna do is navigate into the document library. And of course, we don't have anything to work with just yet, so I'm just gonna upload a document to this document library. So on my desktop, I've got a document called a Word document. And um, what we can do with this Word document, currently this is inheriting permissions from the parent, but I still have the option to, to share with, uh, with other people. 
And uh, so this is logged in as, uh, as demo user 11, which actually currently already has, uh, or just has contribute permissions. So let's just switch across to the site where I'm logged in with full control. So I can show you uh, that this is currently inheriting permissions. So one way of, uh, of checking that, you can click onto the, um, the, the drop down for the document. And if we go to share, so this is a little bit different in the user interface to, uh, to, to classic SharePoint, uh, but same principles. So, so we can click onto, uh, onto share and um, in the top right hand corner, hidden away is manage access. Uh, so that's behind that uh, ellipsis. So we can click onto manage access and that will show me who's got permissions to this particular document. And we've got an advanced link in the bottom right hand corner. So as we click onto that, that takes me again to that classic page and uh, we can see who's got permissions to it, but you'll notice this yellow ribbon that says this document inherits permissions from its parent. Okay, so what we're gonna do is actually just click onto the share option uh, for that document. Okay, so, uh, so we'll click on to share. Okay, I'm going to share it with a uh, another user. Uh, so maybe demo user eight. So that will be shared. It sent a link to the document, and once more, we'll just go through and click share again to see who has access to this. So we'll go back to manage access. And interestingly, what I want to uh, point out on the right hand side, if we see it, it might not show me, um, but it will tell you who has, uh, who has edit permissions. Um, and it will tell us that uh, demo user eight in this case actually has edit permissions, but actually it's contribute permissions that they get. So I notice it does this. It gives a direct permission to that user of contribute. So demo user eight now has contribute permissions to this particular document, and this document now has unique permissions. So it's broken the permission inheritance for me um, so that we could just give that one user uh, permissions to it. Now, for that reason, uh, we really need to think about this uh, because the more broken permission inheritance we have on our folders and our documents, the slower the performance when we're doing things like rolling up content um, into one of the roll-up web parts that's available with SharePoint out of the box or even a, th a third party uh, roll-up tool. Um, because SharePoint is having to check what documents that are being aggregated um, that the user that's logged on can, uh, can access and it's therefore having to go through and, and check that as it's doing that aggregation. So that can be a, a performance challenge. Um, there's also limits to how many access control lists you can have with inside a document library, uh, which is quite high. It's like 500,000, but I've known um, your document libraries are capable of holding a lot more documents than that. They can hold millions of documents. Um, but uh, yeah, there is actually a, a final limit on the, the number of unique permissions that you'll be able to have with inside a document library. So you need to plan it. You need to either consider breaking permission inheritance on folders and anything that requires a certain level of permissions or a certain type of role within inside your department that, that needs to have different permissions on documents stored within that folder, then break the permission inheritance on the folder and then leave the documents inheriting the permissions from that folder. Um, that will uh, save you from having so many different uh, access control lists within inside your library or even consider another document library. So you could have, uh, for example, for a sales department, you might have a document library um, that contains all of the sort of generic sales documents that are available for anybody with inside the sales department. But then you might have another document library um, and you could even create a folder for each um, region um, with different permissions to different salespeople uh, within those regions. So in other words, somebody from the US sales region couldn't create a proposal for somebody in the European sales region um, because they wouldn't have the permissions to do so with inside that particular folder. So we'd assign the permissions at the folder level, not at the uh, item level.
Okay, um, the other challenge that that leaves behind when we break permission inheritance like that, not just um, from a performance standpoint, but what happens if demo user eight was to leave the organization? Um, think about how many documents you have with inside your document libraries, uh, with inside your office. Um, you, you may have hundreds or you may have thousands, tens of thousands or even millions. Um, even if you have hundreds, if a user was to leave your department, have you got the time to go through clicking onto share clicking onto this ellipsis and then choosing manage access and then clicking onto advanced just to see if they have permissions. And then if they do, selecting them and removing their permissions. You probably don't have the time to do that on hundreds of documents, let alone thousands. So being able to control that through folders or through different document libraries is going to make your life a lot easier when somebody leaves you know which folders which document libraries to go and remove them from and you're not doing it on multiple uh, documents throughout uh, a library okay so so really that's permission inheritance it can be broken manually as well uh, which uh, in fact let me just jump back in there so uh, to, to break the permission inheritance manually we can go to the um, advanced permission settings and uh, on the site, you'll see that that's basically a, a toggle um, where you can uh, either inherit permissions um, or break the permission inheritance. Uh, we're not seeing it on this particular one because it's a top level site, uh, but that's where it will be uh, on the ribbon uh, just here. OK, so, um, so that's uh, really permission inheritance. So centralized versus decentralized permissions management. Who's going to do all of this stuff? Um, basically, obviously, we've got uh, SharePoint Farm administrators. We've also got tenant administrators that can um, manage permissions, um, but they're going to be typically managing it from a, a governance perspective. And let, unless you're in a much smaller organization where one person does control the permissions for everybody, um, once it gets beyond sort of 100 users or something really we want to start farming this out to people that actually own the content um, so it becomes too confusing for somebody that is a um, single IT person to know what permissions to all of this content other people should have uh, so by giving that responsibility to a site collection administrator you're basically moving into a decentralized permissions management environment but the challenge there is that those site collection administrators, first of all, need to fully understand how the SharePoint permissions work um, and, and make that part of their responsibility to ensure that the right people have the right permissions to the content. Um, but also uh, to to really, uh, like I say, make sure that that's, uh, that's part of their role uh, sort of going forward. And, and likewise with site owners. So you may as a site collection administrator make somebody a site owner uh, and we need to make sure that they also have that understanding as to what they need to do uh, to, to manage those permissions effectively. So the benefits of uh, decentralized permissions management, business users know who should access their content better than IT would. Um, the permissions can be assigned through a SharePoint group or an Office 365 group. Uh, so easily you can add and remove people to these SharePoint groups or Office 365 groups uh, when new be new people join the company or, or when they leave the company, uh, you can basically control the permissions through the uh, through the SharePoint groups. And what IT will be doing is basically doing the same thing, but they'll be using the Active Directory security groups, so they can take people out of those as they leave the organisation. Um, the problem with doing it on the Active Directory security group, these are not that granular. Um, so if you had a salesperson leave your sales department and you ask them to be taken out of the sales active directory security group taking them out doesn't mean that they don't just lose permissions on your site they may lose permissions to pr print to a printer <laughs> that's on their desk or to be able to access a file share so these active directory security groups are organization wide not site collection wide um, so taking somebody out of a SharePoint group is far more uh, granular than, than taking them out of a uh, Active Directory security group. It's a much bigger decision to take them out of an Active Directory security group and for that reason it's often not done um, and you end up um, with people that can still access your sites and you have no idea that they can still access your sites uh, and therefore controlling that at SharePoint group level um, is a lot better. 
Uh, IT administrators don't face uh, localized permission granting requests. So it's really a challenge when somebody says, can I have access to this site, please? And really you have no idea whether they should or should not. Um, that's a, a challenge for, uh, for us. Um, and the other thing is farming that out to the help desk. Help desk users um, don't always know um, what permissions you should or should not have, uh, but also help desk users need full control to that content to be able to change the permissions. And you as a SharePoint farm administrator or a tenant administrator may not want to give them uh, full control. So uh, there's certainly pros of decentralizing the permissions so that it's the responsibility of the, uh, the site collection admin um, or the site owner. Okay, so um, a few other things to, uh, to talk about. Uh, I know time's sort of uh, running out, but things have changed a lot for um, modern sites. You may have picked up on some of those changes already. Um, but one thing that's dramatic is the fact that we've ha got these new things called hub sites and associated sites. So with a hub site and associated site, they are different to site collections. Um, basically, we can create lots of different sites. So we could create a new site called sales. Uh, we could create one called North America sales and we could create one called European sales. Um, each one can be their own site collection effectively. They can all be uh, a top level site, but we can associate the European sales and the North America sales with the sales hub. So that way, any sales content, whether it be documents or news or whatever it might be, can all be rolled up to the sales hub um, the same look and feel can be applied to all three of those sites and so on but permissions do not inherit so each one will have their own permission levels throughout those three sites and that's what sort of affects uh, what we're doing here you're not going to have that ability to inherit or create unique permissions you're just going to have unique permissions to your site that may be associated with other sites um, Office 365 groups are the default new members. Uh, we, we, we just saw that. Um, and permissions can be granted um, to the site only using Active Directory security groups, which we also saw um, as, we, uh, as we created it. So a uh, few different um, tips here. Uh, so if edit permissions is too high for your users, we, we had a look at that, then um, you could create a group with contribute permissions if that's a better fit and that can become the default group. If you've watched previous webinars that I've done, I've always recommended creating a default group. This is something that recently um, becomes less effective in a modern site. So let me tell you what I mean by that. Um, what I can do is actually uh, take this um, group here that I created. So this is the SharePoint permissions contributors. And if I want that to be the default group for my site, I can click on the drop down here for settings and choose make default group. Now what that did for SharePoint on-prem and classic SharePoint was if I clicked the share button with inside that site and I share this site with a user, it would make them a member of the, uh, the, the SharePoint permission contributors group and give them contribute permissions. That's not quite the case now. So if we just go, it still will be the case in SharePoint on-prem. You can absolutely do that in SharePoint on-premises and I would highly recommend it. In SharePoint online, we have to kind of give it a bit more thought. So when I click onto that cog here and I go down to site permissions and I invite people, the difference is the default place that they're going to go into is into the Office 365 group. And the Office 365 group still is a member of the members group, which has edit permissions. Um, if I go to the share site only, I still have uh, no control over that. Let's put in uh, demo user 12 in this case. Notice what it's doing here. It says they're going to get edit. Uh, let's just take out that send email. Go back into site permissions, advanced permission settings. And we'll look in our contributors group. Oh, I'm 
stand corrected, sorry, it did still have an effect. <laughs> so yeah, demo user 12 did go into that uh, default group, the one that I marked as the default group. So if I share permissions in that way, they're still gonna get the uh, lesser permission than edit, which is good. Um, if of course you assign those permissions by, uh, by just inviting them into the Office 365 group, then in that case, they're still gonna get the edit permissions. So that's a, the one thing that you want to watch out for there. Otherwise, that's a really good uh, tip for anybody using SharePoint on-prem. Classic SharePoint works great. Uh, you just need to give it a bit more thought when you're sharing permissions in modern SharePoint. Um, so avoid fine-grained permissions if you can on items. We, we talked about that one. Um, don't change or delete existing SharePoint permission levels. Uh, these are used, the, the permission levels are site collection wide. Um, so changing them is going to change them for every single site inside your site collection. If you delete a permission level, it's going to delete it in every single site with inside your site collection. Uh, it just won't be available and you could end up leaving people with the out permissions to sites that is business critical. So um, th if you don't like what the existing permission levels do, then you don't change them you can copy them, make them your own, and then you can change them. So if we, uh, sorry, let's just go back to the site permissions. So we'll look at our site permissions one more time. And go to the uh, to the advanced permissions here. So by going to the permission levels, I can go into contribute, and this is uh, actually quite a really good example. Uh, so I can go into contribute, scroll down to the very bottom, and choose copy permission level. So by copying it, I get my own permission level. So I can call it Brett's permission level, and put a little dash contribute on that so we know what it is um, and then I could uh, take some permission levels away like maybe I want people to be able to add and edit items I don't want them to be able to delete so I can remove the delete items and one thing people forget is this one if you're stopping them from deleting items stop them from deleting versions of items as well uh, so that's uh, another checkbox that you have to deselect uh, so then I can you know, do the same thing again create a SharePoint group give this custom permission level um, assignment to that uh, SharePoint group and make that the default and then people will go in there by default and that's the permission they would get they won't be able to delete documents let alone delete entire lists and libraries um, another point to hear is on uh, external sharing so of course in Office 365 you can have external sharing and that is set up in two different levels you can enable external sharing at the tenant level um, and then you can turn it on or turn it off at site level. Now, as a business user, what you need to consider is at any point, is anybody going to create any content within inside my site that I would not want people externally to be able to see? Um, and if that is the case, then what you may want to consider is having two sites, one where it's uh, for internal content and another one that you're quite happy to share that content with your uh, suppliers or your customers or whoever it might be um, and enable the uh, the external sharing on that one uh, because if somebody clicks on to share um, at your within your site gives them uh, the ability to access a document depending on the settings that person may also be able to share with somebody that they know as well and before you know it uh, there's all sorts of people that are external to your organization that can um, view that document so um, yeah, you, you might want to just make sure that that's kept a little bit more securely uh, with some granular settings on, on that particular site that suits your department uh, as, a, as a business. And the other one is just review SharePoint permissions regularly as well. Like I said at the start, make it part of your responsibility um, as a site owner or as a site collection administrator to keep an eye on who's got permissions uh, to, your, to your content. Uh, one of the one uh, is control access request settings as well. So that's actually uh, an option that you get uh, with inside your sites. So if we just hit back here a few times, we'll get to the permissions page. So 
So I want my ribbon back. Let's just uh, go back this way. So once more, we'll, we'll click onto the cog here, and we'll come down to the site permissions, advanced permission settings, and in here we've got the uh, the access request settings. And uh, you saw me create this site, so this is the default. Um, we've got allow members to share the site and individual files or folders. Uh, so that's anybody with edit permissions can share. Um, if they do share, uh, there's an access request. So that access request goes to the administrators of that site the, or, or site collection. So you can actually specify an email address where that access request will go, and then you've got the ability to accept or decline it. Um, the reason why I'm making the big thing of this is most people will see, oh yeah, this guy is a new salesperson, he's requesting access to the sales team site, I'll grant that. Um, you're going to then break permission inheritance on a document uh, if that share request was at the item level. So just make sure that you're considering what that email says, what you're about to do, and you may consider a better way of doing it where you don't actually break permission inheritance on anything. Um, you may say, yes, I can see that that person needs permissions to this site, um, but I'm going to do it a different way. So I'll decline this option in the email, and now I'll go and add them to the relevant SharePoint group that's going to maybe give them less permissions than what they'd get if I just accept this uh, this, this request. So that's uh, another uh, good tip there. Okay, um, so quick overview of DeliverPoint. Um, so I'm going to show you a brand new version of DeliverPoint, which um, isn't quite yet launched. It's currently uh, available as a beta. Uh, version or about to be available as a beta version, um, it's already baked into this site. Um, you saw I didn't add it. Um, it's uh, it, it's already there though. Uh, so you'll notice in the top right hand corner, um, I've got some deliver point commands. And notice this: if I go to discover permissions, I can see exactly who's got permissions to this site. And I mean exactly. Uh, so uh, it doesn't matter how they were granted it, whether it was through uh, an Active Directory security group, whether it was through a SharePoint group, you can see exactly who's got permissions to it. We've got those users that were given contribute permissions. Um, if we take demo user six with edit, notice I can drill down and see how that came about. So if there's anybody that was uh, perhaps granted permissions through the sales group, like this one, it tells me that. Um, using SharePoint out of the box, you'd have no idea um, unless you uh, could see the members of that sales group in Azure Active Directory that Demo User 9 was in there and that Demo User 9 had access to your site. Um, but DeliverPoint here is, is telling you that. Um, we can then select that. Uh, if we don't like it, uh, we could do something about it. So on the Actions menu, you'll notice that we can you copy permissions or transfer permissions. Maybe it wasn't sales, maybe it was um, regional sales or something that should have had permissions. So we can transfer permissions between Active Directory groups and between users. Uh, we can grant or revoke permissions that we don't like uh, and things like that all from, from here. Uh, you can uh, also add DeliverPoint as a web part on the page. Um, that could be the uh, the home page, which probably would look really ugly and uh, so on. I'm just going to do it because time's not on my side. Ideally, I would create a separate page. So let's just publish that site there. Okay, so we've uh, we've got the live point on here. Like I say, ideally create it as a uh, put put it on a separate page. This gives me a security trimmed view of the whole tenant and everybody who's got permissions to it. So if you were just a site collection administrator, maybe for four or five different site collections, you'll see those four or five site collections in here. If you're a tenant admin like I am, uh, you're gonna see everything. So you can manage permissions across the, the whole board. Uh, now what you will see, I'm just gonna go to a better example than that one that was we just saw that has just a single site. I'm gonna go to this one instead. And you'll see when we've got a site collection, that it's very easy to tell which sites have unique permissions and which ones have inherited permissions. So here we've got direct sales and partners have inherit permissions and I can tell that because they have a dimmed icon. Uh, the sales team site has unique permissions. So I can tell that because it's got a full color icon and so on. If I wanna see who's got permissions on that site, I just simply select it, 
go to reports and discover permissions and then I can see exactly who's got permissions to that sales team site and I can make that full screen if I want to and, and so on and, and really sort of dive into detail. I see the same thing on the lists and libraries so I can see all those lists and libraries that have unique permissions um, so I can tell instantly that tasks and site assets has unique permissions. Uh, we can filter this as well, this report. So if I wanted to um, just look at a particular user, we could filter on that user um, or we could filter on permission level and, and so on all through there. Uh, the other thing we have, we talked about what happens if somebody leaves your organization and you've got lots of um, direct permissions assigned to documents. Uh, what we can do is this account centric view that allows me to search on an individual user and by doing so we can uh, pull up a unique permissions report and that will show me what uh, permissions this user sorry that was a bad example wasn't it <laughs> let me do uh, do it this way we'll use that account There we go. So this is a brand new site. There's not many permissions on it, um, but it tells me what um, site permissions, what list permissions, or what item permissions are unique uh, that have been uh, assigned. So when that user leaves the organization, I can simply just go to the account management and uh, delete their permissions from all of those sites all in one go, uh, and it becomes uh, a single operation. So that's just a, a sort of short taster of, uh, of Deliverpoint, you'll also see that you can use it um, contextually. So site owners will really benefit from this. Anybody less than a site owner won't know it exists. It won't be an option to them inside of SharePoint. Um, but if you're a site owner, you can really manage content rather than sort of drilling down those sort of seven or eight steps that you saw. Um, I can just basically select a document here. And um, here we've got our, uh, discover permissions uh, right on the ribbon there so I can uh, I can select that uh, discover the permissions that'll open up deliver point for me uh, I can see exactly who's got permissions to that one uh, document just with uh, with one single click okay um, so that's a quick taster of, uh, of deliver point um, helps business users it also helps uh, admins uh, be able to um, manage permissions and, and report on permissions more effectively. It's available for SharePoint on-premises as well. Um, so this is what it looks like in SharePoint 2016. Um, so you've got the ability to do the same thing. Um, there's a full color dashboard and so on with a ribbon uh, to suit the interface there. Um, it also offers things like auditing and alerts on uh, permissions as well. Um, and finally, I'm going to open up for a, a q and I know a lot of people have dropped off the, the call because we went over, um, but uh, they will be able to watch back the, uh, the recording. Um, there is a number of resources available. If you want to take a further look at DeliverPoint, there's a couple of links here for on-prem or online. Um, we've also got some of the Microsoft documents that I was talking about, so external sharing, best practices, and understanding permission levels. And uh, there's also a permissions guide that I wrote um, on SharePoint 2016 permissions as well, uh, which uh, is a PDF that you can download and everything um, that uh, is, is shown there. So at that point, I'm going to open up for a Q&A. If anybody has any questions, just raise your hand and uh, I can unmute you. Um, otherwise, if you wanted to drop off, feel free to do so. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for, for attending. I think I've got the, the first question, which is uh, from Pamela. So Pamela, I'm going to unmute you now. Hi, Pamela. Hi, can you hear me? I can, loud and clear. Okay. Um, one of the things we have problems with here is people who need to build on permissions. Say they need something at a low level in a site but they also need something at a higher level within that site or a little bit more permissions. The lower level is keeping them from being able to do something at a higher level. I see what you mean. Yeah. Okay. So you, uh, so, so uh, just to clarify my understanding, um, so perhaps you want to give them say edit permissions to the site, but you only want them to have read permissions to a document. Would that be? Right. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Um, absolutely, you could still break the permission inheritance on the document effectively, um, remove them, 
as as having the edit permissions and then grant them the the lower permission level um i wouldn't recommend doing it on a document though i would um create a folder for that reason if if you could categorize it in that way so maybe if there's a group of documents that you only want them to have read permissions to then create a folder break the permission inheritance on the folder remove them give them read permissions and then put the content within that folder that they only require read permissions to um, but if they're in I'm sorry but if they're in a security group and the security group has the lower level permissions I can't do anything unless they're removed from that security group Correct. If it's an Active Directory security group, um, absolutely. So you, you would need to um, use a SharePoint group in, in that case. Um, so that might be a sort of bigger decision to, to make with the Active Directory administrators or, you know, <laughs> whoever will be involved in that. But um, yeah, if, if the Active Directory security group has, say, edit permissions to, to the parent, um, site you want them to only have read you you wouldn't be able to do that through the security group you'd, you'd have to remove that security group from the folder that contains the uh, content and and give that individual read permissions or give a SharePoint group read permissions right d d does that help <laughs> not really <laughs> no okay um, it, it, if I'm misunderstanding something um, but by all, drop, drop it on an email to me. Uh, so it's so a Brett at lightningtools.com. Um, if, if you could uh, sort of further clarify it, and then um, yeah, I'll, I'll certainly see what I can do to uh, to assist. All right. Okay. Thank, thanks, Pamela. Okay. Any uh, any other questions from anybody? No, I think that was the only one. So um, at that. Point then <laughs> thank you very much for attending I hope you found it useful um, the uh, webinar was recorded it will be available on our website uh, so if you go to lightningtools.com and click on webcasts uh, you'll be able to get it from there um, from tomorrow morning ish and uh, also you'll find a whole bunch of other webcasts as well that hopefully you'll find useful uh, in that same place so thanks everybody um, have a great rest of the day and speak to you soon